It's a big dinner last night, a wonderful celebration, about 500 guests at the Chateau Laurier for the politics and the Penn uh, Gala. Uh, there was a big award also awarded last night, and it's for the, uh, the Shaughnessy Cohen Prize for Political Writing. It's wonderful to have the winner of that award here with us today. He's the author of Walls, Travel Along the Barricades, and it's Marcello Di, Di Cintio. Hopefully I got it right. Absolutely. Almost. Okay, awesome. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, it is a, a wonderful honor to have this uh, award, but also mm. probably something you didn't quite set out to do when you started no. to write this book. No, I'm, I'm, I'm a travel writer. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, my, all three of the books that I've written are me going abroad, finding interesting things, and writing about them. Um, this book happens to be about political barriers and uh, political borders, fortified edges, and that, and that sort of thing. So it is political, I suspect, but it's not, it wasn't my intention. Uh, your intention too, you, you originally had about 15 different places that you wanted to travel and to see the differences, but how did you narrow it down? There, there became eight almost stories to this. Yeah, I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to visit places where, where, where a physical wall or barricade separates communities, um, typically on a border, but not always on a, on a national border. And uh, so there's so many of them. I started doing this research, I, this, I kept finding and finding and finding them. So I had to kind of narrow it down to ones that were more representative and, and some that are people know. I mm -hmm. wanted to be to touch the ones that people heard about, the, the wall between Israel and Palestine, the wall on the U.S.-Mexico border, for example, and other ones that people perhaps don't know a lot about, the wall in, in the Western Sahara, the, the fencing along the border between India and Bangladesh. And I brought it home and wrote about a, a rusted old fence in Montreal. Were you able to get perspectives both sides? I mean, you're looking at a fence and you've got an individual on one side and an individual on the other. Were you fascinated by the stories? Yes, absolutely. And I tried as best I could to, to, to meet people on, on, on both sides. Mm -hmm. For the most part, though, I, I met Pep. I'm, I focus on the stories of those people who the wall was built to wall out, um, those who felt they were in somehow, somehow uh, that it was an obstruction for them for their, for in, their, in their daily life. And that, that's, those are the people I focused on. This was a long time for you to be on the road. Yeah, over the course of over the course of four and a half years, uh, I uh, I spent forty seven weeks away from home. It's a lot. It's a lot to be able to to go and travel and then to come back with these stories. You were able to put this book together, and now who do you find are you speaking to? I mean, as an author, you're you're out and you're doing lectures. You're with university students. Where is the appeal for you? Are you are you finding it's everywhere right now? Yeah, it's it's been quite broad. I mean, there there are people who who react to the book as, as, a, as a travelogue, which mm -hmm. is great because that's what I originally intended it to be. Right. Um, there's, there's the political angle to it. I've spoken to poli-sci students at university. I've spoken to architecture students because there's something about a wall that it, you know, as a structure is, is, is interesting. And um, as, a, as a narrative journalist, I speak to people for whom who, who creative nonfiction is, is, is an interest. And, and uh, I, I often teach creative nonfiction. And mm -hmm. So this is something that I, they're interested in this as well. What was the interest last night? I mean, here you are, there's 500 guests, you've got a lot of political figures, you have a lot of different authors. What was the evening like for you? It was, it was, it was fantastic. I had a great time last night. And it's, it's, it's quite unique coming from, I'm from Calgary. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm far from this kind of milieu, right? <laughs> and so it was, uh, I can't remember, the last time I was wearing a tuxedo was my grade 12 graduation. So it, it was, it was, it was, oh, there. Yeah, so, uh, there yeah, you there go. you are. <laughs> and, and that's the word right there. You actually have it uh, yes. here on set with us. Yes. Um, it was a fantastic night, really. I, I was surprised to take to, to, to win and um, honored uh, to be there, and I had just had a fantastic night. Do you have a different appreciation, or when you see, you know, a crossing of having to go from one side to another side, that you look at it differently? Yeah, well, I notice I notice fences a lot more. <laughs> I notice borders. Absolutely. I mean, I, now now I see these structures um, more than just physical uh, structures. I see them and what what how they affect people in an emotional mm -hmm. and psychological way. And that's really what I learned in the course of, the, of these travels. Was what do these walls mean for people who live in physical intimacy with them? How does it affect them in, in psychological ways and, and real life daily ways? Sounds fascinating. Fascinating stories and, and the reason why you've won such a prestigious award. Again, it's called Walls that Travels Along the Barricades. Uh, you traveling anytime soon? Any no, other I'm ones? Going, I'm going back to Calgary. <laughs> You're good. I'm good. You're going to take it easy for a little, a little while. while. Congratulations Thank once you again. Very, thank you very Huge much. honor.